Okay, today we're gonna to talk about how to use the oxyacetylene rig over in the Tyler Metal Shop. We're gonna talk about how to set it up, not necessarily a technique video. This is a, a very um, dangerous piece of equipment if it's not handled properly. And let me stress that if it is not handled properly, this is a very dangerous piece of equipment, okay? We're using flammable gases, highly flammable gases. We've got acetylene and oxygen. Acetylene is in the, uh, a fuel gas. It is very volatile over certain uh, pressures and in certain environments and oxygen is an accelerant and that is a, uh, a really um, basically if there's something hot uh, and even slightly combustible and oxygen is introduced it is going to uh, catch on fire and it's going to be really dangerous. You've also got two high pressure or I should say the oxygen cylinder is a high pressure cylinder and so you're going to want to be really careful around that valve if you're um, rolling this thing around the shop uh, we do have it on this handy cart here, and um, you're just gonna do that really carefully. Always make sure that it is chained up securely before you go attempting to move this thing around the shop, and you'll wanna have it shut down before you start moving it too. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the equipment. First off, there's this wonderful chart up on the wall, which is gonna basically tell you for your different heating and bending operations. Let me get the focus to actually work there. Uh, so for basic heating operations, welding operations, and you can go between the two. Uh, you can use welding tips for heating as well. And you've also got uh, a cutting operation too. I won't actually show you how to heat, weld, and cut things, but I will show you how to set up the equipment. And uh, all the information up here is gonna help you set this up and be a reminder uh, outside of this video. So uh, read it and understand it. This also tells you about the different uh, cylinders and how to read the different uh, valves. And then down here, you've got your different types of flames uh, so that you make sure that you wind up with a, uh, a neutral flame, which is that uh, bottom corner here. So first off, you're gonna to wanna to grab whatever uh, equipment you're gonna be using. So I've got a few different pieces of equipment already out here on the stool for you. You can see a couple of welding uh, nozzles. Here is your multi-flame heating assembly or the rose bed sometimes it's called. That'll give you a little bit more heat. Uh, and then over here, your, uh, a couple of cutting torches here. They're set up with different size tips. Um, so when you look at the chart, you might, if you're gonna be doing some welding, you're gonna to wanna to know what, how do I determine my tip size. On the welding nozzles, it's written right here. So this is a number two tip. Um, and over here is a number four tip. I don't know if I can get that to focus properly, but um, so it's, it's printed on the back of the nozzle there um, for your different ones. We only have one uh, heating assembly, so the chart should be pretty explanatory. If you're doing uh, cutting operations, the tip sizes are printed on the on the, no the, the very tip of the nozzle here. This one reads, I'm sure you can't see it in the video, but it says 3-1-101, and that's a tip size three. So it's always the first number. And just to give you another example, uh, this guy reads, let's see, 2-1-101. The dash, oh, 1-101 is the model number. The first number is your tip size. So this 2-101, uh, this guy is a number two tip, uh, and the other one there is a number three. So these guys get set up a little bit different, so you'll probably want to watch. We'll see if I get to it in this video, but these guys get uh, placed onto the torch a little bit differently. Let's first focus on, uh, you know, a fairly normal one here, which is um, a small welding nozzle. You can also use this for spot heating small material. Some other equipment you might wind up needing. Um, if you're going to do work uh, in the vise, we've got a little uh, torch holder that can get clamped in the vise. That way the torch is held securely. Uh, in the vise. We've got a striker here in order to uh, light up the flame. If you're doing some cutting operations or need to do some, you know, banging out of some slag or something, uh, we've got a chipping hammer here. Notice the non-flammable uh, handle on there, so nothing will burn on that thing. Um, let's talk about setting this thing up. So remember, these torches, uh, this oxyacetylene rig, is potentially very dangerous if not handled properly. So we want to make sure that when we're working with volatile flammable gases were dressed appropriately. So you're gonna be using a shade five um, face shield. So that's one of the darker face shields. The welding masks are gonna to be too dark for this operation. I'm gonna set him aside for the moment. And you're gonna approach your setup here to uncoil the hoses. Red hose is acetylene and the uh, green hose is uh, oxygen. Now notice on the torch body here, you've got this funny little cap on here. That means that somebody set uh, this thing aside uh, properly. If you ever see this thing returned with this 
cap, not on it. This is brass, this material for the, the torch body here, the torch handle. These threads can get damaged really easily if they're dropped on the concrete, knocking around on the steel, uh, bumping up against the tank. So you always want to have one of these thread caps on the torch when it doesn't have, you know, when it's in storage. And we don't leave the heating assemblies, cutting assemblies, or torch, um, you know, welding nozzles attached to the torch body because they could get damaged. The um, if you're missing one of those, these uh, welding tips have, and the diagram up there shows it, sort of in this fashion here, right? They thread on like so, right? So you can use the torch cap to hold on your um, tip or your nozzle. Another good thing to check before you go putting any piece of equipment on there, there's two sets of O-rings. Um, and if I take a look at, well, we'll take a look at one of these oxygen um, Guys, there's two sets of O-rings in here, and you just want to make sure that those O-rings are in good shape if, um, you know, before you put it on there, too. When you attach any kind of a cutting assembly or torch assembly onto the torch body, you only hand tighten it. I like to um, hold it in the dominant hand, whatever hand I'm going to be working with it, and make sure that the valves are accessible with the flame paint pointing away. Whenever you're working with this torch, you're going to make sure that you're not pointing towards the tanks. You never aim the fire towards the tanks. I know that sounds a little silly or redundant, but also the same thing with the hose. You don't want to be having, uh, if you're cutting something and hot metal hits that hose, you could have a really dangerous situation. So make sure the hose is not underfoot and not under the area you're working. Have your, backs towards the, your back towards the tank. So let me set this um, a little closer here and we'll take a look at the um, tanks themselves. And I'll even use the chart here to set my settings. So right now, what I've got going on here is a, uh, a number four welding nozzle. And so I can come over to my chart and uh, I determined I wanted a number four if I happen to be welding by the material thickness or if it's, you know, just about the amount of heat I want to do some small bending operations. So I've got the tip size, number four. Oxygen pressure has a range of between five and ten and my acetylene pressure between four and seven. So I can aim somewhere for the middle there. When you're opening up an oxygen bottle, any kind of high pressure cylinder, you want to just ease it open. And then before you do that, make sure that these two regulators on both of these before you open the bottles. Make sure they're loose. If they're loose, that means they're closed. Okay, you want to make sure that you don't hammer this line pressure gauge uh, with all the pressure that's inside this bottle. You can really do a lot of damage to the equipment. So this is loose, this is loose. Now we can open the tanks. So we're going to open, ease open this oxygen and that guy is going to be opened all the way. He's a high pressure cylinder. Uh, and you want to be real careful with these guys because they held a ton of pressure. So I'm getting a reading on the tank. Um, these can hold as much as 2,000 PSI. We pretty much always read the inside numbers, the red numbers, by the way. So these gauges, um, now we've got our, our working pressure. And again, our chart told us between 5 and 10 pounds of working pressure for the oxygen. Anytime you're setting working pressure for um, any kind of compressed air, compressed gas situation, you do it with a line open. So I set my uh, oxygen valve open on the torch valve here, preferably open all the way, and then I'm going to slowly work this in until I get somewhere between 5 and 10. And so I'm going to aim right in the middle somewhere, so it's not a ton, and I'll close it. You don't want to keep these valves open any longer than you need to to set these pressures. So now my oxygen is set. I'm good. Now let's go over to the um, acetylene here. Maybe I'll and I'll basically repeat a similar operation. The acetylene bottle's different. Look at it. It's a little short, stubby, uh, funny thing. It's got the highly flammable gas. It basically isn't um, filled with compressed gas. It has uh, acetone in a sponge, and then it's dissolved in there, kind of like a CO2 bottle, um, you know, like a... Uh, like a soda drink, right? So if you jostle this thing or have it just on its edge, uh, you always want to keep this guy upright. Otherwise, you could have all that acetone and the contents of this bottle blow out. It also means that it's got less uh, pressure in the tank, too. So with this one, they, um, they set up the valve slightly different. This is the only situation where you only open this guy, and by the way, loose again, uh, you only open this guy about a half to a full turn. That's the only situation in here. That's so that if something goes wrong, you see a flame pop out of some part of the torch or somewhere that it shouldn't be, uh, then you know you can come over to the tank and shut off the gas supply very quickly. So only open about a half to a full t um, turn at the very most. Really like half to three quarter turn is, is really all you need. Um, any more than that, and you're just 
uh, making a dangerous situation for yourself. So then we're going to set our pressure. Remember, it's between five, uh, or I should say between four and seven was our, uh, our working pressure over on, the, um, over on the chart there for this particular tip, number four size tip. And now I'm going to open up this acetylene until I get to, uh, I'll go to about a little above five, and then I'll close my um, acetylene valve. Notice that the pressures jump a little bit after I close the valve. If I were to mess with this, look, I, I just increased the pressure. Oh no, I put too much in there. And let me back it off. Oh, I can't because the valve isn't open. So you never know what reading you have until you have the torch valve open. So that's why we always set the line pressure with it, uh, with the line open. So we don't want to vent too much of this gas. It smells like onions. Um, that's something that they put in there to let you know that you have a, a gas leak. So um, be careful with this gas venting out there. It is volatile. You'll notice the numbers on the, the little gauge here. The numbers on the gauge read um, anything past 15 and it's a big red line. That's a danger, no, no, no. So you want to make sure that you don't go above uh, 15 uh, pounds per um, square inch. So we're always reading those inside numbers. Now we've got our torch set up for this particular tip. Um, we're ready to work. Some other things safety-wise that you want to make sure of. I know I already mentioned you want to work with your back to the tanks, so let's set up with my back to the tank here. Um, if for some reason I wanted to uh, do some torch work, um, you know, heat a small part or something like that, I can uh, easily hold that torch in a vise using this fun little holder here we have. And uh, let me show you how that works. We want to be careful with the torch. Um, those copper nozzles and heads on them can get damaged very easily. We also don't want to clamp the torch body into a vise somewhere because we could easily damage that brass. And so what we have here is a device where you um, basically slide the back on first, thread in the front, and then now it's held securely in the vise. We can orient it in different ways. We can adjust our tip to aim in different places, and then we can kind of work on our part. Uh, we can even swing the table or the vise around. So that's how you'd work on it safely. Um, and then you also have access to your valves up here. Another thing, safety-wise, when you're striking this thing, and I might make a separate video on lighting these things, but uh, if you're striking these, you always want to use a striker, right? Flint striker. You never want to use something like a lighter or a match or something like that, because now you have a flammable object uh, right over where there's a bomb. Anytime you're lighting things, you just use a little bit of gas to start with, and I'll even light this up a bit here away from the tanks, um, and then you would add just enough gas until most of that soot goes away, and then... Um, I'd probably have to do this through a lens. Um, and then you'd want to get your neutral flame. When you're done, when you're done, you want to shut this down by turning the acetylene off first. You don't want that loud popping noise. And then the oxygen will snuff out the flame. So that's how you uh, light the torch uh, safely. We'll talk about neutral flame later. So it's always a little bit of acetylene, strike, add a little bit more acetylene. Then you add your oxygen to get a neutral flame. When you're done, turn the acetylene off first. You start with the acetylene, you end with the acetylene. Now let's talk about um, breaking this thing down properly. You want to bleed the lines. So first thing we're going to do is turn uh, the gas off at each tank. We're going to close the tank valves. And then the next thing we're going to do is bleed the line by opening the torch body. And when we look at that, we'll watch both readings on both tanks drop to zero. Then we're going to close the uh, regulators by loosening them until there's no tension on them. Sometimes these guys might pop off entirely. Don't worry, that's fine. When they fall out of there, that means that it's totally closed. Just don't lose them. Put them back on there. And then we can close the torch uh, valves as well. We'll pop our uh, whatever our assembly is that's on there. And then remember, you always want to leave one of these torch caps on the tip of the torch here. And with that, uh, you can coil up your cable nice and neatly and loosely. And you've got it all broken down for the next person to use safely. Um, so never let this thing get uh, dragged around on the floor or knocked around. Always wear your safety gear. So make sure you're wearing that Shade 5 hood you're gonna to wanna to wear um, some kind of fire protection. Um, so I've got a light cotton jacket here, shade five for any oxyacetylene work. Some gloves are always good. Um, and remember, just keep all those flammable objects away from the, um, 
oxyacetylene torch in the area you're working in uh, throws off a lot of heat, a lot of sparks, high pressure gases. Can't stress that enough. Follow the safety rules on this one um, so that you don't hurt yourself or you know blow yourself up or anybody else in the shop. So uh, work safely and if you have any questions on this gear just ask your instructor, ask the shop technician. Uh, that's for realsies on this one folks. Um, don't mess around with this machine unless you've been cleared on it by your instructor uh, specifically or by the shop technician. So work safely and good luck.